Welcome to Module 4 of Play With Your Music. This week we'll be building on our mixing skills to create a new creative mix of air traffic, this time starting from the dry stereo stems and exploring audio effects using the browser-based digital audio workstation Soundation. The developers of Soundation have a number of great videos available to help you get started with their platform and workflow, which you should absolutely check out. But hopefully this video will give you enough of an overview to get started and know which of their videos will be most helpful to you relative to your personal level of previous experience. A digital audio workstation, which is often just abbreviated DAW or DAW, allows musicians, engineers, and producers to record, manipulate, and mix audio and MIDI in a non-destructive way. A lot like a word processor allows an author and editor to collaborate and revise a manuscript easily making corrections, being able to save their progress, and simply hit backspace or undo if they make a mistake. Throughout the relatively short history of recorded sound, the process has gone from recording a bunch of musicians all together in one room through a single large horn onto a permanent medium like wax or acetate in the late 19th and early 20th century, then on to the development of microphones and mixers that could combine sounds from multiple different microphones onto an analog reel-to-reel -reel tape that could be reused, recorded over, and edited. And then in the 1960s to multi-track tape machines that gradually allowed from 3 to 24 sources to occupy their own individual tracks on a tape that could be recorded separately and mixed together after the fact. Now. DAWs allow many individual sources to have their own individual tracks and be affected, edited, and mixed together in a nearly infinite number of ways. There are many different DAWs in use today that you may have heard of, like Pro Tools, Logic, GarageBand, or Ableton Live, which Ethan has demonstrated in some of our previous videos. It's hard to say that any workstation is better or worse than another because they fundamentally do many of the same things. But they're each unique tools and certain features or ways the interface is designed might work better for one person or one particular type of workflow. One of the advantages of Soundation is that it operates completely within a web browser, so you don't need to download any software or purchase any special audio hardware to start playing with your music right away. Because of this, you can also use Soundation to collaborate with people online all across the world on the same song or session. Over the next three weeks, we'll be working with Soundation to put together mixes, remixes, and our own original music, all without leaving the browser. For those of you who have previous experience in a traditional DAW, you'll notice how many features they've been able to incorporate into a web application. And for those of you who are learning about digital audio workstations for the first time, take comfort in knowing that many of the skills you'll develop using Soundation will translate well to other DAWs you may use in the future. For our assignments, you can complete them using a free Soundation account, but there are also paid options available that you can read more about on their website. You'll also need to set up a SoundCloud account where you can publish and share each of your mixes. It's worth taking a moment to consider the difference between these mixing assignments and the upcoming remix assignment. The vernacular can get a little confusing, but generally we say mixing when we intend for a mix engineer to create a mix using the arrangement and recordings that the musician and producer originally put together. Remixing is usually reserved for a process of using original tracks to build a new and highly original remix, possibly with a different arrangement, new instruments, loops, and recordings added and then an engineering of a final mix from that new arrangement. So keep in mind that in this module we'll be mix engineers and mixing this song, leaving the arrangement and musical structure pretty much the way the artist originally released it. Next week you'll be working as a remix producer, putting together an original remix of the same song, and we're really excited to hear what you come up with. So to get started with this mix, you'll be opening this session by simply going to soundation.com slash air underscore traffic. Unlike last week when we were working with MP3s, the good folks over at Soundation have set us up with full resolution 16-bit 44.1 kHz WAV files, and they may take a few minutes to load depending on your internet connection. So plan on letting the page load for a few minutes before you can get to work. 
When you first load the page, you'll see lots of individual blocks where the sounds will go, but they won't play back until you actually see a waveform drawn in those blocks. And again, this may take a few minutes. Once all the files have loaded, you can use the transport controls here at the bottom of the screen to play back and move around within the song. One important tool worth pointing out is this loop button, which allows you to loop a selection within the song so you can really dial in an effect or mix. I definitely recommend this while exploring different effects and for sections where you're working with instruments that just play a few times, like the baritone guitar or timpani. As we mentioned, there are tutorial videos on the Soundation website that explain all the controls and capabilities of this workstation, so please dig into those, but I'll try to point out a few features while we're in here. As you look over here at the left of the browser window, you'll see horizontal faders that control the volume for each track, solo and mute buttons, and a pan pot just to the right of the fader. You'll also notice this button labeled FX, which opens a menu where you can select from a number of different effects that you can insert on an individual track. You can drag them around to place them in different orders and open them up at any time during your mix process to make adjustments. You also have the capability to automate volume or panning or a number of different effects parameters so you aren't restricted to a static mix for the whole song. Don't feel you have to go crazy with automation to create a great mix. Focus on putting together great sounds and a careful balance between them. To learn more about each of these individual effects, I'd recommend looping a small section of a single soloed instrument or voice, and then try inserting different effects and playing around with the parameters. Also experiment with the order that you insert the effects. What does it sound like if you put an equalizer before a reverb? or a delay before a filter. As you look through this list of tracks, you'll see a track for each of the instruments and voice parts, and also a track labeled EFX, which is a composite of all the send-based delay and reverb effects that we used in the final mix. Send-based effects allow you to send multiple sources to one effects processor or plugin, usually a reverb or delay, so you can get a sense that a group of instruments are all being treated the same way or playing in a similar environment. In the insert-based effects we have available here in Soundation, they're inserted into the signal chain for each individual track and let us tailor each effect to that specific track. A third type of effect you might use would be a rendered effect, where you would select a clip of audio and apply an effect to just that clip with the software rendering the result into a new audio file. In Soundation, you can apply render effects like time stretching or reversing an audio clip by right-clicking on the clip and selecting the effect from the menu here. Those are techniques that would apply more to your remix project next week, but it's important to know the difference between send, insert, and rendered effects. So explore the effects you have available here learn how each of the parameters controls the sound, check out tutorial videos from Soundation, and also the live interview with audio effects expert Alex Case this coming Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. As you make edits, you can save your project locally as an SNG file through the file menu. And when you've finally developed a mix that you'd like to submit to your learning ensemble for feedback, click Export WAV file from the file menu which will create a full resolution 16-bit 44.1 kHz WAV file of your stereo mix with all of your effects, automation, and adjustments that you can save to your computer. Once that process is complete, you can upload that mix to your SoundCloud account and embed or share the mix with your learning ensemble and the Google Plus community by copying the code right into your email and posting. Have fun with this project. Post questions to the Google Plus community in your learning ensemble, and also write them down so you can get some effects expert answers on Saturday morning. We look forward to hearing your mixes on SoundCloud and reading about the process you went through in putting yours together. We encourage you to revise them as you get feedback from your learning ensemble so we can all follow your process through multiple iterations of the mix.